Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I'm looking at another notebook from my paperclip. My paperclip is an Australian based company uh, that make really affordable and really good quality uh, notebooks. Uh, at the moment, their biggest sort of uh, way of retailing is through their website, so I'll link to that below. But keep an eye out in retailers uh, because uh, I think this brand is a you know is destined to be well represented, shall we say? The book I'm looking at today is the Signature Series, um, and this is the uh, like eco-friendly version, the Echo. Um, and uh, I'm going to talk about this notebook. I'll give a brief rundown of its parts and features, and then show. Uh, some paper tests and stuff in the back. So, uh, it's got rounded corners. This has one of those like card style sort of covers. Nice elastic in the same color. There are a couple of different color options of this. This is the King Fisher version. Um, I, I think the camera is picking it up much more blue. It's kind of like a more turquoisey blue. Um, it's got the My Paper Clip sort of logo there on the back. And yeah, so rounded corners, page up to the edge. Um, simple binding, all of that kind of stuff. When you open it up, you get a basic sort of end page, and I like the fact that all the print in this, uh, including the lines, this is a line version, is like in a really lovely matching kind of uh, turquoisey, tealy blue. Um, you get a little bit, you know, the website, all that kind of thing. You get, um, you know, this book belongs to, and then in the back, you get a little bit more of that same social media kind of stuff. As I said, this is the ruled version, and with a little encouragement, it does lay flat. It's, you know, sewn by, bound and all that kind of thing, so it's sturdy, it's, it's going to last, it's well made, um, and the lines go right to the edge of the page. The My Paperclip notebook uses a 7mm rule, which I think is a nice width. It's big enough uh, that if your handwriting isn't tiny, it can fit quite comfortably, but you still get a decent amount of lines on the page. And that's the basics of the notebook. You've got a ribbon here. Um, which is once again in that same matching color. Um, and then if we turn to the back, you'll see where I've done some writing tests and got a bit of information here. So uh, this is their eco-friendly or their um, you know, recyclable notebook. Um, it's the My Paper Clip Signature Series in the Shiro Echo 90 GSM white paper from Favini in Italy. Um, it's produced from 100% post-consumer recycled waste. It is fully biodegradable and recyclable. Really love that. Um, you know, in this hobby or this, you know, stationary lover's world, we use a lot of paper. And uh, it's always great when companies, A, use recycled paper, B, give some thought to it, um, and it's, you know, appropriateness for a range of different writing instruments. A lot of recycled paper is not great quality and everything kind of bleeds and feathers on it and my paper clip have sought out a paper that uh, actually performs pretty well as you'll see in a little bit the cover is from winter and co in the uk it is designed in australia and made in india as i said this is the kingfisher blue it's roughly a5 size uh, so it's 148 by 210 millimeters, uh, which comes out at about 5.83 by 8.27 inches there. It has 192 ruled pages, a good amount of pages, and particularly for this price at $30.90 Australian. There aren't a lot of notebooks that stay around that $30 mark, particularly notebooks of this quality. Um, once you start to get into some of those more luxury priced brands, you're not necessarily getting a better performance from the paper, nor the better build quality or design elements and things like that. So this is a really reasonably priced uh, notebook. I've done a little bit of a scoring and sort of a little checklist at the bottom here, which uh, just gives a little bit. So for ghosting, I've said seven out of 10. We'll see that in a second. It's actually pretty good. It's a decent weight paper, decent thickness. So ghosting isn't the worst I've seen. Uh, fountain pen friendly, I've said yes at 7.5 out of 10 for your everyday fountain pens and then your everyday rollerballs, ballpoints, that kind of stuff. This notebook really does perform quite well. If you're using big, wet, stubby nibs or flex pens and things like that, this may not be the best option for you. Um, a lot of that will depend on the wetness of the pen and that kind of thing. Uh, but for everyday writing, 
which is what this notebook is for and this brand is for. This is a brand that you can take in your bag. You can, you know, throw it around. You don't have to be afraid to use it. At this price point, uh, it's very, very affordable. Um, it does lay flat, as I said, with some encouragement. It has a ribbon and an elastic. It doesn't have a pocket in the back. Some of the My Paperclip notebooks do. This one doesn't, and it doesn't have a pen loop. But how does the paper perform? Well, here is a range of ink tests I've done. I've written with Lamy Black in a Lamy Safari with an extra fine, Van Diemen's Ink Devil's Kitchen in a Vintage Schaefer Pen for Men, PFM, with a fine nib. Uh, Van Diemen's inks tend to be a little more aggressive on the page. They're a little wetter and they do tend to bleed and feather just a little bit more. Pilot Black in a Vintage Pilot Justice uh, on the soft setting. Then Diamine Terracotta in a Diplomat Excellence A2 with a medium nib. And then Base State Blue in a Jinhao 992 with a fine nib. And that is a very aggressive ink. And I always use that to really push a paper to its limit, shall we say. I then use a Bastion Ballpoint, a Lamy Rollerball, a Muji 0.7 gel pen, a Kaki Mori Fine Liner with a fountain pen ink platinum chukuro ink in it. Um, I've then used a Tombow Mono 2B pencil, a highlighter, and then of course a Sharpie, once again to push the paper to its absolute limit. If we look over the page, I think that performs pretty well. Base state blue comes through a little bit. There's one spot from the pilot and a couple of little spots where the uh, uh, Van Diemen's ink, as I said, it's quite an aggressive ink, has tried to come through. And of course the Sharpie has come through. But generally speaking, I think it's performed really, really well. Um, there's no great, no great bleeding, shall I say. And if we look at the inks up close, we'll see there's not a whole lot of feathering happening either. There's a couple of spots in the Van Diemen's that have tried to feather, but as I said, that is a relatively sort of wet, aggressive kind of ink, but everything else has performed really well. Actually, if we look at the reverse of this page, this was done with dye mine terracotta as well. Um, and if we look at the reverse of that page, this is where I'm going to talk about the ghosting. Like there's, yes, you can see through it, but it's not bad at all because it is, as I said, a slightly heavier paper. Um, it's slightly thicker. We do get a bit more protection from that. It is a toothy paper and it's not super white. Here is a sheet of office um, copy paper and you'll see it is off-white. It's not a pure white paper. And as I said, the paper is slightly toothy. It's not super smooth. It's not a coated paper or anything. Um, so you do definitely feel the paper under the pen when you're writing, but I think it performs fairly well. Just for the sake of the exercise, here is an Aurora Talentum, which is a fairly wet Italian fountain pen. Um, with diamond handle from the music series. Lovely ink. Um, you can hear the, the feedback on that paper. Um, and here is a Scrivener EDC fountain pen with Robert Oster. Let's do RO, we know what that means these days. Chicago from the US Cities um, series of inks. You can definitely hear the feedback on that paper. It's not unpleasant. Um, and if you're using particularly smooth nibs and things like that, and then I just have an Ellington Pens fountain pen here uh, with, this is another die mine, Monaco Red. So, what I've got here is a couple of sort of more standard fountain pens, like everyday uh, fountain pens, and then something a little bit wetter. And if we look at the reverse, you can see that wetter nib has sort of come through a bit, uh, but the others have performed pretty well. Um, a couple of spots from the Monaco Red, but really nothing too bad. It's certainly um, much better than a lot of recycled paper on the market. So it's very, very uh, impressive what they have been able to uh, m do here at uh, my paperclip here in Australia. So this was the signature series from the uh, the, the Echo line. I hope you found this video interesting and useful. Please like and subscribe, hit the notifications button. As I said, I will link to the website down below. I'll link to this notebook specifically so that you can find it. As I said, this is recyclable and biodegradable, all of that kind of stuff. They've really put some thought into making a really eco-friendly uh, and sustainable 
notebook here and at a a a super reasonable price at thirty dollars ninety and b with really decent quality uh paper that can handle as you see in this in my written tests here it can handle a range of sort of everyday fountain pens and other writing instruments of course as well so a big thank you to my paperclip for sending this out for review um if you'd like to support the channel i would love to hear from you in the meantime enjoy your notebooks enjoy writing and I'll talk to you soon.